Okay, how is everybody? Welcome to FM Tuition Academy. So this is a place where we offer online tuitions and we offer online tuitions in any subject, in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry, in biology, even in English, depending on which subject that you want to do. So as I said, you can be watching me from any place in Zambia. You can be watching me from Livingston, Mufurila, Kapiri, Mongu, Luansha, any place where you're watching me from. You are able to access these online tuitions and we have videos that we broadcast continually, even a private WhatsApp group. We are also on Zoom, Twitter, and Instagram. So it doesn't matter where and which place we are coming from. You are able to be taught. So as I said, today we're looking at 2017 past paper. If you want to do tuitions with us, simply means comment your phone number there, whether it's MTN, Airtel, or CLZ. Just comment your phone numbers you are watching, and then we'll get a hold of you. Our team will conduct you. This is FM Tuition Academy. Teacher Frank is the one teaching mathematics today. As I said, can you see? This is 2017 past paper. This is a 2017 past paper. Have you seen the way it came? This is a 2017 past paper. Matrix K. It's 10 to 10 negative 2. Okay. 10, 11, negative 2, negative 2. Find the determinant. The first thing that you do, whenever they ask you to find the determinant, you say, you pick the first three letters. You say the determinant of K. Okay? The determinant of K. And then you multiply the numbers that are in the major diagonal. These numbers that are in the major diagonal, can you see them? It is 10 and 2 and negative 2. So you say determinant of K is equal to 10 times negative 2. You multiply this Number in front times the one that's on the end here, negative 2. You put them in square brackets, minus. You also multiply these numbers that are in the, in the minor diagonal, which is negative 2 times 11. Negative 2 times 11. You put them in brackets like that. You simplify this, guys. 10 times negative 2, it is negative 20. Minus. This minus, you bring it here. This times that, negative 2 times 11, negative 22. Okay? That is negative 20, negative, negative times negative, positive, 22. This plus that, it will give you 2. So, the determinant was actually 2. The second question was saying, find the inverse. That was question 2. Find the inverse. Whenever finding the inverse, what you do is you say inverse of k, you see, you're finding the inverse of this k. Inverse of k, this negative means inverse, is equal to, you always put 1 over the determinant that you found, which is 2, then you put a matrix like this. Is that right? Are, are you understanding? The next thing you do, you go to the major diagonal that you had used, the time when you are dealing with what? The time when you are exactly dealing with the determinant. The major diagonal was 10 and negative 2. Negative 2 goes where 10 is. 10 comes where negative 2 is. This negative 2 comes where 10 is. 10 comes where negative 2 is. So negative 2 comes where 10 is. 10 comes where negative 2 is. That's the first step that you do. The next step that you do, these ones in the min minor diagonal, reverse signs. If this one is negative 2, it will become positive 2. It reverses the sign. So it becomes positive 2. Okay? It was negative, it becomes positive 2. This one is negative 11. Uh, this one is positive 11. It reverses the sign. It becomes negative 11. Then what is outside multiplies with what is inside. What do you have? That is half times negative 2 over 1. Again, this half times 2. You say half times 2. Are you understanding? Half times 2. Half times negative 11. Half times negative 11 over 1. Half times 10. This is a matrix that we are having. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 2, 1. 1 times negative 1, it becomes negative 1. 1 times negative 11, it becomes negative 11 over 2. Okay? 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 2, 1. Of course, this is over 1, as you can see. N number on this one is over 1. N number on this one is over 1. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 10, 5. 
1 times uh, 1 times 1 on top is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 it is 5. That is the answer. Have you seen how easy it is? So this was the first question that we solved in 2017 past paper, question 1. We are discussing this past paper and you need to pass your exams. So I'm helping you to understand these question papers so that you're able to solve them on your own. That's how you solve the inverse. By saying 1 over the determinant you found, which is 2, and then the ones in the major, in the, in the major diagonal exchange. Negative 2 goes where 10 is, 10 comes where negative 2 is. They are swapped. This one comes here, 10 comes where 2, two is. Then these ones then in the minor diagonal, reverse signs. If this one is positive, if it's negative, it becomes positive. This one is positive 11. When it comes here, it becomes negative 11. I hope you have understood. So we can proceed. Let's go on question 2. What is question 2 saying? Question 2 in the past paper. What is question 2 saying in the past paper? Let's go to the past paper again. We solve question 2. We are looking at the determinant. We are looking at the determinant. Now we are looking at what? Question 2. This was question 1. Question 1, A and B. Now, we are, we are now going to part B, part B, the same past paper. It will solve the simultaneous, the quadratic equation. They gave us a quadratic equation which we are supposed to solve. What is a quadratic equation, guys? The, the, part B was given as, this was part B, okay? This was part B. Okay, this was part B. What was part B saying? It was saying, solve the equation. Okay, what was the equation? The equation was 3, 3, 3x, 3z squared, minus 7z. 3z squared minus 7z is equal to, let me just look at the question again. Just wait a minute, I'm picking this question from the past paper. What was question 2? Question 2, question 2, question 2. Okay. Where is that question? Okay, 2017. This is a past paper. I'm looking at the past paper. Question 2. What was question 2 saying? Okay. 2017. Question 2 was saying. Okay. It was written like this. 3z squared is equal to 7z minus 1. Okay. This is the way it was written. Okay. Let's solve now. So this was it. But question B of question 1. So it was 3z squared. 3z squared. Okay? 3z squared is equal to 7z minus 1. And then the question was solve the equation. This is a quadratic equation. The first thing you do, you always remain with 0 on the right. So you, you all these numbers this side will be shifted this side. You need to remain with 0. So it will be 3 z squared, negative, uh, two, uh, 7 goes this side, since it's positive 7, when it crosses equal sign, it will become negative 7z. And then this one is z minus 1, when it crosses this side, it becomes z plus 1, which is equal to 0, guys. The next thing that you do, you use, you pick the coefficients of this. What is my a here? The a is a number that is in front of z squared, which is 3. So a here is 3, okay? What is my a here? The a is the number that is in front of z. So a is equal to what? 3. b is this one. That is in front of z. b is negative 7. You pick them with their signs. c is equal to what? 1. Have you seen what that c is equal to 1? c is equal to 1. Then when you are done, what do you do? c is equal to 1. Okay. 
Then you use the quadratic equation. What is the quadratic equation? The quadratic formula, that's the one that you use. You say x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Then you substitute these parameters in this quadratic equation. The first parameter that you substitute is, have you seen the equation starts with negative? This negative, I bring it here. And then it's saying negative b. Have you seen my b here is what? It's negative 7. This is my b, negative 7. So I'll put negative 7 here, negative 7, brackets, plus, minus, square root of, b squared, it means negative 7 in brackets, squared, minus 4, a. What is my a, guys? What is my a? I look at here, my a is what? a is negative 3. So a here, as you can see, is negative 3. So where there is a there, I put, I put 3, rather. And then... What is my C? C is 1. Okay? Over 2A. Meaning 2 times 3. A is 3. So what do you have there? X is equal to, you simplify this. Negative times negative is positive. Only 7 will remain plus or minus square root. What is the negative 7 squared is 49. Okay? I bring minus there. This minus comes here. This 4 times 3, 12. Times 1, 12. So it will be 12 there over 6. What do you have? X is equal to 7 plus or minus square root of who? What do you have? 37. 37. 49 minus 12, 37 over 6. You split this into 2. How do you split this into 2? Because only one number has remained. Everything has been simplified. Only one number has remained. So if it's one number that has remained, guys, you need to split it. The next thing that you do is you split it into two. So you say x, x is equal to 7. You pick one sign there. Plus square root of 37 over 6. Or x is equal to 7 minus square root of 37 over 6. So you say x is equal to. You pick your calculator. Pick your calculator. What do you have? What do you have? What is 7 plus square root of the 7? You punch that on a calculator. It's going to give you 13. 7 plus square root of the 7. It will give you 13.082753. You divide this number by 6. It will come to x is equal to 2.1804604 Okay? When you round off this answer to two decimal places, it will be x is equal to 2.18. Meaning this is the answer. You are done. You simplify that again. x is equal to. When you punch this and that on the calculator, what do you have? You are going to have zero point nine one seven two five one nine seven six depending on the calculator that you're using it doesn't matter you divide this by six what do you have it's divided by six what do you have it will give you zero point zero point 0 0.1528222911. Okay? When you round off this to two decimal places, here you are, you are rounding off to two decimal places. Even here you round off to two decimal places. So it will give you 0 0.15. Okay? That's how you do it. That's how you do it, guys. So this is a quadratic equation. I hope you have understood. And I hope it's making sense. So that's how you do it. Okay. So this is a quadratic. So as I said, you run off to two decimal places there. Even there you cut. So it would be 2.18. So we are done. This is question 2. I mean question 1. Question 1B. One so this is how you solve a quadratic equation.
We go on question two. You can copy this, write it. If you are able, you can even come back and rewind the video and start it afresh. So let's go on question two, guys. We are going on question two. We are going on question two, question two, question two, question two, guys. Let me go on question two, question two, question two. We are going on question two, guys, on question two. This is interesting. This is 2017 past paper. 2017 past paper. So this is question two. Let's go on question two. What is question two saying? Question two, it was like this. Question two, A is equal to, this is question two A. It was saying simplify. That's how it was written. Simplify, simplify m squared, simplify m squared minus 1 over m minus m. Well, over m squared minus m. That was question 1. So it was saying simplify this. This is what the question was saying. So how do you simplify this? Of course, this is very easy. Like I said, you can have sub calculations this side. I can put sub calculations. Okay? I factorize this separately. M squared minus 1, I'll factorize it. What is M squared minus 1 as a difference of two squares? To be M squared minus 1. Can you see this? So I don't confuse you. Maybe let me just do it here so that you don't have too many calculations. Have you seen where this is? This one can be expressed as a difference of two squares. So one, you square it as well. So that it becomes a difference of two squares over what is common here and here it's m. m into m. One m will remain. Minus m into this m is one. You have factorized. Have you seen what we have done? We have put a square on one because we want to make it a difference of two squares. Two squares. This the square of m and the square of one. And then you factorize for m because m is appearing both sides. You factorize m. m is common. m into m. One m will remain, which is this one. Then you factorize this. As a difference of two squares, you pick m plus one. Okay? m plus one, you put it in brackets like this. Is that clear? Are you understanding? So m plus one, you pick it, you put it in brackets. And then what do you have? m plus 1, you pick 1, m, you put plus 1. Again, the other m that remained, m, again, minus 1, which had remained. This is a difference of two squares. And then it's m here down, m minus 1. Since this one and this one, they are same. m into m, this, they are same, you cancel them out. m minus 1 into m minus 1, 1. m minus 1 into m minus 1, 1. What do you have? m plus 1 over m. This is the answer. That is the answer. It is as simple as that. So this is question two. This is question two. A. So that's how we solve question two A. And then we now go on question two B. This is question two A. I'm wrapping question two A, 2017 past paper. Let's go on question two B. Question two B. What is question two B saying? This is interesting, guys. You are going to get a distinction. As I said, this is FM Tuition Academy. You just simply indicate where you're watching me from and comment if you have to do with us. Question 2B, it is saying, question 2B, what is question 2B saying? Question 2B was saying, I'm now getting question 2B. What is question 2B saying? It is saying, the first, the first three terms the first three terms, the first three terms of a geometric progression, the first three terms of a geometric progression is 6 plus 1, comma, that's the first term, 10 plus n, so 6 plus n, that's the first term, comma. Second term is 10 plus n. Third term is and 
15 plus a. That's the second term. Okay? That's the third term, I mean. Question 1 says, find. Find the... This is question 1. Find the value of a. So we'll start with that one. That's the first question. It is saying find the value of a, guys. Okay. The first thing we ask ourselves is, what is a geometrical progression? It's a progression. A geometrical progression is a progression that has got the common ratio. So I'll take these terms. This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. So I'll find the, the value of a. The only way I can find the value of n is by using common ratios because geometrical progression deals with common ratios. The first thing I do, I list the series. What is my series? Okay? My series is n. My series is 6 plus n, comma. Second is 10 plus n, comma. Third is 15 plus n. Okay? So this is my first term, second term, and third term. So this is my, my first term. This one is term number one. This one is term number two. This one is term number three. And then I find the common ratio. How do you find the common ratio? So I find the common ratio of this. So the common ratio here it is T2 minus T1. That's a common ratio there. The common ratio here, it is T3 minus T2. Okay? It is as, it is as simple as that. So as I said, ratio here it is T2 minus T1, ratio there, it is, the ratio there, it is T3 minus T2. Have you seen? This ratio is this over that. So it means T2 is what? What is my T2? My T2, as you can see, is 10, 10 plus N. So my T2 is 10 plus N over. My T1 is 6 plus N is equal to my t3 is 15 plus n over my t2 it is 10 10 plus n when you reach here what do you do since you are trying to find n why before i even reach i i reach here have you seen t2 is the answer for t2 is this the common ratio here is T2 over T8, uh, over T2 over T1 is this. T3, it is T2, T3 over T, uh, the, the other common ratio for this and this, it is T3 over T2. Now, have you seen the answers are like this? Have you seen this? But you can you see the here it's error, here it's error, meaning these two answers need to be equated. Okay? They need to be equated. So the answer for this is this one. The answer for this is this one. This answer for this is this. The answer for that is this. But I need to equate this. Why? Because it's common ratio. So it means it's supposed to be 10 plus n over 6 plus n is equal to, I'm equating it with this one, which is 15 plus n over 10 plus n. Then I cross multiply. I cross multiply. So it means I'm multiplying 10 plus n in brackets. 10 plus n in brackets times again 10 plus n down there is equal to 6 plus n times 15 plus n. Okay? This times that, this times that. How do you solve this? You have done this in grade 9. Whenever I cross multiply, you multiply 10 times this 10. It becomes 100. Again, 10 times positive n. It becomes positive 10n. You are done. Okay? When you are done, you also multiply plus, plus n times 10. It becomes plus 10n. Okay? Is that clear? Plus n times this n. It becomes n squared, which is equal to, same thing again when you reach here, 6 times 15. What is 6 times 15? So we have 15 there times 6. What do we have? That is 30, 0 carry 3. This times this is 90. So 6 times 15, 90. When you, when you finish multiplying 6 times 15, you also multiply 6 times n. So it becomes plus 6n. Okay? You are done with the 6. You go to positive n. 
positive n times 15, it becomes positive 15n. Positive n times n, it will become positive n squared. Okay? Can you see this? So as you can see, the n's will cancel out because this n will come this side to subtract this n. So it's as good as I've removed this n and that n. Why? Because when n goes this side, it will subtract. Is that clear? n squared minus n squared. When this is positive n, when it goes this side, it becomes minus n. So it simply means this and this have cancelled. It is as simple as that. Okay? So we are simplifying this. How do you simplify this? It will be 100. 10n plus 10n is 20n. Okay? Is equal to, here it's 90. Uh, 6n plus 15n, it will be plus 21n. Okay? Plus 21n. When you reach there, guys, this keeps on getting more and more interesting. You group the like terms, guys. You group the like terms. What are the like terms? 20n minus 21n. 21 positive 21n goes this side. It becomes minus. And then here we have got 10. This 100 will go this side. Since it's positive 100, it goes this side. It becomes negative 100. So what do you have? We have, this is n. 21n, so it will be negative n is equal to negative 10. When you divide by negative 1 both sides, you find that n is equal to 10. That's how you calculate for n. n is equal to 10, actually. n is equal to 10. Is it making sense? Are you understanding? Is everything clear and are people getting me? It is as simple as that and people are understanding. Okay, so this is basically question two. Why find n? So you find the common ratio, this and this. You divide these common ratios. Then after that, you, you, you equate the, the common ratios. You cross multiply. This times that is this. This times this is that. When you cross multiply, where n's are same, you cancel them out. You group the like terms. You find that n is actually is equal to 10. That's how you solve this. Okay, let's go to part B. So this was part B1. So we go on the second question of the same type. Now this was question I. So we are done with this question. The third question, the third question of the same question, the second question uh, uh, rather. The second question was saying, this was question one. Question two of the same question was saying, Find the common ratio. Find the common ratio. So the second part, the first one was find the value of n, which we are calculating. We have calculated this one. You remember? This is the one that we are from doing. Find the value of n, and we found that n in our calculations that we are doing. We had found that n was actually what? 10. The second question of the same type, it is saying find the common ratio okay so you remember my series was 6 plus n comma 10 plus n comma 15 plus n so they said find the common ratio how do i find the common ratio this is t1 this is t2 this is t3 you remember the common ratio it is t2 over t1 so what is my t2 6 plus n over I mean, my T2, it is 10 plus N. Can you see my T2? My T2 is 10 plus N. Over, what is my T1? My T1, T1 is 6 plus N. Okay? 6 plus N. But now, when N is 10, so it means, you say, when N is equal to 10. So wherever there is N here, I put 10. So what do I have now? Where there is N here, I put 10. 10 plus 10 over 6 plus, where there is n there, I put 10. What do you have? 10 plus 10, it is 20. Over. This plus that, it is 16. Okay? And then what do you have? 10 over 16. What number can go into 16 and 10? 5. 5, or 4 rather. 
4 into, into 20, it is 5. 4 into 16, it is 4. So my answer, it is actually 5 over 4. 5 over 4. Okay? And when you divide 5 divided by 4, what do you have? What is 5 divided by 4 on the calculator? 5 divided by 4, what do you get? 5 divided by 4. 5 divided by 4. So 5 divided by... 5 divided by 4. It is 1.25. 1.25. 1.25. Are you correct? One point two five. It is one point two five. Five divided by four. One point two five. So that's how you solve this. Okay. So this was the second part of the question. Why they ask you to find the common ratio? So you list them T one, T two, T three. Common ratio T two over T one. You just pick one of them. If you wanted to pick T3 over T2, but just picked one, the common ratio is 1.25. The last question, it, say, it said, find the sum of the six terms. Find the sum of the first six terms. So this was question, question two. This is question one, which we found, which we, are, we already calculated as the value of N was N, which we calculated previously. And then question two is this one, 1.25. Question three of the same question, this is, this is one, this is two. And then now question three now. Question three, what was question three saying? Find the sum of the first six terms. Find the sum of the first six terms. Okay? Question three was saying, so question three of the same type, it was saying find the sum of the first six terms. So find the sum of the first six terms. Okay, six terms. And the formula is sum A is equal to A, open brackets, A, SN, which is sum of any number of terms, is equal to A. A means first term, minus one, close, over R minus one. Okay, over R minus one, and then what do you have? We are going to have... What is my first term? My first term, A, it means first term. Letter A, it also means T1. Okay? And what is my T1? It is this one, 6 plus 1. So 6 plus N is my first term when N is equal to 10. We already calculated N in the previous. So it will be 6 plus, where there is N, you put 10, which will give you 16. Okay? A is alphabetically A, it means the first letter. So it means the first term, T1. When you look at our sequence, T1 is 6 plus N. So it is 6 plus N. But we already calculated N. So where there is N there, you put 10. Because N was 10 in our first question. So six, this plus that is 16. So I'm going to have 16 there, open bracket. N, it is 1.25. 1.25. You remember R? R was 1.25. It's a common ratio, the one we found in the second question. You remember our R? Our R was 1.25. You remember our R was 5 over 4. When you divided, it became 1.25. You remember? This was our R, the one we just calculated. So this R, you put it on R here. You put 1.25. So it is the sum of the first six terms. So sum of six terms you put is equal to A, it means the first term, which you calculated is 16. R, it is 1.5, press the power 6, minus 1, over 1.25, minus 1. When you punch this on the calculator, the answer you get there is the sum of the first six terms. It is as simple as that. Thank you very much and thank you for listening. I hope you have understood and it has been of help. So don't get confused. This is the, the formula used for some of the first six terms. SA and then where there is A, that's A, it means first alphabet letter. So it means T1, you simplify, you get 16. You get your 16, you put here. Some of the first six terms. So it means on A, you put six. On A, you put six. And then you simplify. When you punch this, 1.25 to the power 6, you punch on the calculator, the answer you get minus 1 times 16 divided by 
Then you're going to find the answer there. That's the sum of the first six terms. Thank you for listening. I hope you have understood.